Should we see if Standby Me Man is there? Yeah. I can't hear him, so maybe he's not there. But Let's check one more time for Standby Me Man. If he's not there, like... I just hope that he's there, basically. He's not here, man. Stand by me, man, he's not here. I think the numbers, I think the statistics do show that homelessness is increasing significantly, especially under the Conservative government with austerity and stuff like that. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm wary that I'm not an expert on it. It is increasing. But I think the thing to, that I would like to sort of emphasise on that is that homelessness is the tip of the, of the iceberg. You know, people who are literally living on the streets. But there's a lot of people who are homeless that are not living on the streets, that are like living on friends couches or living in cars or like you know you know just bouncing with different family members don't really have a stable permanent home um you know and then there's a lot of people one step above that who are like have a home but are just struggling to make the rent or struggling to make the movie or struggling to pay the bills you know so um when homelessness increases you can guarantee the number of people who don't have a home and are bouncing around increases and then on people who have a home but it's not secure increases you know what i mean and those are the big things which we're seeing more and more of. And we will see more and more of if we don't do anything, unfortunately. That's another pessimistic message, so. I guess I should add on top of that, that look, if we fix wealth inequality, we can reverse this. But only if we fix wealth inequality. Um, so like, there's like, a, there's two sides of the message. One is like, if we don't do anything, things will get worse. Yeah, that's a shit message. People don't want to hear that, but it's true. And I'm not just saying that, I've been betting on it for 10 years and I've been right for 10 years. Um, but if we do understand that, then we can fix it. And then the scope that we have for improving our economy is enormous. And what that means is you can make good wages on a regular job. You know what I mean? Or like, you know, my sister works in the theater and she works so hard that she just scrapes to make the bills sometimes. You know what I mean? At the moment, we live in a world where these kind of artistic creative jobs are basically not options for people from poor backgrounds. We could move to a world where you could do a job in a thing that you love, even if you're from a poor background. And yeah, maybe you won't be rich, but you, you, can, have, you can have a good, secure life. You know what I mean? Um, these, are, these were possible 50 years ago, these things. You know what I mean? Um, so they're possible now, but we need to fix wealth inequality. That's, so we have to do that. And to do that, we need to build a movement and, and, and get people understanding how important it is. Maybe social mobility is on the up. I mean, you can go to university, but can you actually get a job that makes any money afterwards? You know what I mean? You know, increasingly, like even people who go to a good university and get a good degree and even work in a professional industry are finding that, first of all, these professional industries, they work you like dogs. So these guys are working like 100 hour a week. And then, you know, maybe they can make 50, 60 grand a year, which is great, you know, for a young person, much higher than average salary. But if you come from the wrong kind of family, even that, you're gonna to have to really save and save and save and save every year before you can get a property, you know what I mean? And these are the people who went to the best universities and got the best jobs, you know what I mean? So what about the people that went, you know, just to ordinary universities and got ordinary jobs? That is what most people are gonna do, you know what I mean? Ordinary graduate jobs. You know, so I don't think you can really like put your hand up and say we're succeeding as a country because we're sending kids to university if those kids are not able to get financial security. It reaches a point where in the end, you need to get go to university to even compete in the job market. So then you've got like whatever, 30, 40, 50 grand of debt, you know, maybe more if you do a post grad degree, 100 grand of debt. And you still can't pay, like, you, you still can't save much money. You know what I mean? So the end result is, all we've done is force people to stay in education for an extra three years or five years or eight years, pick up 100 grand of debt, and then they would be even worse off than they would have been 50 years ago, you know. Like I said, my dad didn't go to uni, worked in the post office, 35 years, and he was never rich, but, paid off the mortgage on their small house, and he's got a decent pension. There are people nowadays with advanced graduate degrees that will not get the same level of financial security that my dad got working in the post office. That's crazy, right? That shouldn't be happening, you know what I mean? And I don't want to limit what I'm talking about to just people with degrees, you know, because the reality is, you know, if that's the people with degrees, what about the people who don't have degrees? You know what I mean? They're probably making on average even less money. You know, it's just like we're squeezing ordinary people so hard just just for what just so we can just so we can send jeff bezos into space again you know what i mean like it's mad um but yeah hopefully hopefully people will realize and you know the channel will grow and um 
what I really want is for people to pick up the message and share it themselves because there's only so much you and me can do but if other people start picking up the message sharing these videos sharing my website wealtheconomics.org if people want to know more then the idea can spread itself you know it's, and it's not a complicated idea if, if you want to fix the economy in terms of ordinary people's lives you have to do something about wealth inequality and you do and that's we can do that, but only if we have enough people supporting it politically. I mean, moving on from that, I guess, while well, you're looking very much like Nigel Farage, um, which... I was drinking the pint before he said we're going to do the shooting, by the way. <laughs> it's not like, I'm not trying to be Nigel Farage. I mean, there's talk in uh, America at the moment about some of these policies. Are they the type of thing you're talking about? And why aren't politicians here in this country talking about the same thing? It's interesting, isn't it? Like, there's talk there, there's a few different things, like global minimum corporate tax, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, the wealth tax for super wealthy people, obviously that's like the most interesting one. Um, there was a lot of talk about that when Biden got in, and I was telling everybody, look, the policy's a good policy. Like, come to me when it's enacted. You know what I mean? Because I know how it works. Like, people want this. So the politicians pitch it. And then when they get into power, you know, there's a lot of powerful people that don't want this. So they pull the strings where they can and they get a few politicians to vote against it and it doesn't pass. And that's exactly what happened in the US. You know what I mean? Like, it's very easy to make promises, but it's not so easy to deliver. You know what I mean? So, you know, I think... Personally, a lot of these politicians, if they're not very wealthy themselves, they're influenced by very wealthy people. Um, and that's why, like, we, we just, as ordinary people, we have to be switched on politically. And we have to be also really clear and consistent in what we demand. We need to say, we demand a decrease in wealth inequality. A decrease in wealth inequality and an increase in the holding of wealth by ordinary people. How much does the person in the middle hold? They need to be holding more year after year. We cannot accept the rich holding more and ordinary people holding less. We cannot accept that. We need to demand a decrease in wealth inequality. And um, the politicians, will, I know what they do. They say, yeah, we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it. Then they go around the back, they bring in a tax, they stick a load of loopholes in it. You know what I mean? Um, but that's them trying to like pull the wool over our eyes. <laughs> and um, we, we just need to say no. Did you decrease wealth, wealth inequality? And that's the one thing. Measure it by that one yardstick. Did you decrease wealth inequality? Are ordinary people owning a bigger share of the property market with smaller mortgages or are they owning fewer houses with bigger mortgages? You know what I mean? Measure it on are ordinary people getting richer in terms of wealth or not? We have to demand that. We have to demand that. Um, I know, you know, they'll fob us off and they'll fob us off and we have to keep demanding it and we have to vote on it. We have to say we're not going to vote for you unless you do it. We're going to vote you out unless you do it. We're going to vote a new party in. You know what I mean? And we just need to keep saying that same thing. And I know, like, you know, the voting system in this country is a bit ridiculous, it's like a two-party system, but, you know, tell the party in government, if you don't fix wealth inequality, we will not vote for you, you know what I mean? And if the other party doesn't do it, then don't vote for them either, you know? You just need to keep forcing it, you know? And I think, like, Brexit is a good example. The two main parties didn't want it, but people demanded, they wanted to do it, and eventually they got it. And that would be an easier fight, because a lot of super rich people in some newspapers were happy with Brexit, accepted it, and most super rich people would not accept a higher taxes on the wealthy. But it's more important for ordinary people, so we need to push harder. And um, yeah, just like, it is the one thing that we need to make things better. I mean, if you just demand it consistently. Make wealth more equal, reduce wealth inequality. And, you know, we need to just consistently judge governments by that. And they're going to keep, like, throwing nonsense at us, like, oh, well, we're reducing immigration and we're getting rid of asylum seekers and we're going to be tough on drugs, you know what I mean? Screw all that. Are you giving, follow the money. Are you giving money and assets back to ordinary people or are you giving money and assets from ordinary people to the rich? Don't let them like blind you with all of these like cultural stuff. Follow the money because right now they're just telling you oh it's good because we're keeping the Polish people out and they're taking your houses. You know what I mean? Follow the money, demand the money back, demand that wealth becomes more equal. That, that is how we achieve change. But poorer families will be forced to lose almost all of their assets, including their home. We have a tax system which is very efficient at taxing ordinary working people, but very inefficient at taxing the super rich.